so much for joining us today. My name is Brett Schonsenbach. I'm the president and CEO of the Carlsbad Chamber of Commerce. And I'm very excited about this program that we're going to be sharing with you today. Um, we actually started to roll this out the late February, beginning of March. I don't know. Uh, that time frame has become quite a blur at, because COVID's arrival just threw everything, you know, into quite, um, quite a confusing, chaotic time. But we had just started to roll this program out, and I'm very excited about it, what it can bring to our businesses, what it can bring to businesses small and large, but um, both from a compliance standpoint, um, a protection of liability standpoint, and just a fantastic program uh, standpoint. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to spoil too much. I'm going to leave it to our folks who are here to share. You can see that um, John O'Reilly, uh, O'Reilly Wealth Advisors, has got the screen and he will be presenting as well as our friends from Tag Resources, Greg, I believe. And so I'm going to turn it over to them. I'm going to be quiet now and just monitor the chat and look forward to seeing what they have to share. Thanks, Brett. What timing. <clears throat> Sorry about that phone ring there. So I'm John O'Reilly, O'Reilly Wealth Advisors, fellow chamber member, and I'm excited to be sharing this information with you today. So um, when we meet in person, we actually have this little card game, like a deck of cards, and we you put these cards out in front of you. And so I, I'm not going to go through the card game today, but I'm just showing this screen to give you kind of a quick overview of, of how 401k plans typically look because it kind of will help set up the conversation. So if you see this uh, second row from the top of, of uh, items here, administration, custodian, record keeper, mutual funds, these are the four elements that every 401k plan has to have. And then you see down here in the blue, you have your, your company plan sponsor and they're just surrounded by risk and liability with no one there to help them. All that risk and liability falls on their shoulders. Now they may have a registered rep or broker or a, what's called a duly registered person who is trying to help them, but they're not putting themselves inside the red ring of, uh, of risk and, and liability. They're outside the plan, they're being paid, but they're not taking on any of the liability. So it's not a very good situation because the plan sponsor of the company with their 401k plan is unnecessarily exposing themselves to more liability than they have to. So keep that in mind. And it'll, in the, in the, when we get to the end of the presentation, I'll show you how it could look like in, in a better situation. And by the way, this is very typical for most small businesses. They're in this situation right here. And they don't even realize it. They actually think that their broker is uh, shouldering some of the liability, but they're typically not. And they're very tricky about how they talk about it too, by the way. So why should you consider the Chamber's 401k option that they're offering? Well, the, I think the most important thing is less time because if you're the company owner or if your company is large enough to have a CFO or an HR person, uh, you're going to be spending X number of hours per year overseeing that plan. This plan comes with two fiduciaries built in. And by the way, before I forget, for those Zoom users, a little reminder, um, there's a vertical bar on your screen that's between uh, my screen share and the images of the people that are on the call. And you can drag that vertical line uh, to the right-hand side to allow the presentation to appear larger on your screen, make it easier to see. So company uh, leadership overseeing the, the plan is, is, uh, takes uh, a lot of time, but this plan comes with uh, two fiduciaries built in that takes on the day-to-day -day minutia of the plan, as well as the uh, overseeing the, the funds in the plan. It's also less cost. Now I want you to throw a picture out there. Imagine that um, uh, companies that are members of the chamber use pencils. Okay. So the, the Chamber of Commerce goes out to their members and say, well, how many pencils do you use? And maybe they find out, oh, there's 20,000 pencils a year. So the Chamber says, look, we'll go buy 20,000 pencils a year and, um, and then we'll give them, we'll sell them to you for five cents a pencil in, instead of you having to pay 10 cents a pencil like you do now. So we're gonna save you half the cost because you know, we're an association and one thing an association to do, can do is buy in bulk and give a great deal to all the members. 
Well, then let's suggest, uh, let me suggest the chamber decides, you know what, wait a minute, there's that national pencil company and they're supporting a whole bunch of associations. And we can go there and be, become a part of that and get pencils for one penny, a, uh, one cent per, per pencil. So instead of 10,000 or whatever the number I used a minute ago, now it's a million pencils or whatever. So the chamber goes to the national people and they now get pencils for, for their members for only one cent a pencil. And that's what this is about. It's about buying in bulk. So, and then the other point about this is who's paying the cost. So when you have a 401k plan, once it's well established and there's a fair amount of assets in there, uh, then it's possible that the account owners themselves are paying most of the cost in the 401k plan. But when you're a small company and you're just starting out, you have a small plan or a startup plan, those costs are being paid for by the company itself. So while it's always important to, to keep the cost low, particularly from a company expense point of view, it's particularly important to keep the cost low at the beginning. Um, and also, if you do have costs in the plan, uh, not if, you do have costs in the plan, but um, if you can keep those costs lower, the accounts grow faster. And it's the mathematics of compounding. And it, this is something they ought to teach to a higher level in school because when things are compounding, they, they start growing exponentially. And, and, and if you uh, are hurting that compounding, they don't grow <laughs> exponentially. And instead of, instead of having 1.5 million in retirement, you'll have 1 million in retirement. And those are real numbers right now for people in 401k plans that have too high a cost, unnecessarily too high of costs. They can literally end up with uh, 25 to 50% less money in retirement because of those costs hurting their compounding over, you know, say 20, 30 years. And less liability. So when you have two fiduciaries, Bill 10, um, you have less liability. And for, you know, people like in HR, and, and Brett mentioned a minute ago, the term compliant, this plan's always going to be compliant. And as a small business owner, you don't want the headaches of dealing with all that HR stuff and, and benefit stuff, you, you want to um, focus on your main business and profit and loss and, and not have to deal with all this minutia on the side. So your, this plan's always going to be compliant because of these, uh, li the liability being taken care of by the fiduciaries. And when you de-risk a company, you increase its value. So at some point you may want to sell your company or have your you know, employees or managers buy out your company or something like that. And, and this increases the value of the company because it, it uh, reduces the risk. Other than those huge benefits, this is just like any other plan. I mean, you, your employees can't tell the difference. If you switch from a regular, what we call standalone plan um, to this kind of plan, you can't tell the difference. It looks like any 401k plan, other than that there's these tremendous benefits. And as I like to say, Sometimes too good to be true is actually true. Not all the time, but once in a while, it actually is true. What I like to tell people is that if I sold my registered investment advisory firm tomorrow and I took a corporate position uh, in some big company and they said, hey, O'Reilly, you know, since you know about 401k plans, you know, we want you to oversee our 401k plan for us. And I was like, sure, I'd love to do that. I definitely have a lot of knowledge on 401k plans. And more than likely, my goal would be to get my plan to one of these as soon as I possibly could, because this is the nirvana of 401k plans. This is where you want to be. This is where the industry is going. And Carlsbad Chamber is really on the leading edge with this in the sense that they recognize this early on. And Brett told me a story uh, a while back um, where he was in uh, some sort of a meeting with other chamber executives and this concept of these kind of 401k plans was brought up in the meeting and they asked the crowd, okay, is there anybody here, you know, that's, that's doing this and, and Brett raised his hand and everybody looked at him and said, wow, you know, you guys are, you guys are doing the right thing for your members. Good job. Now, this is just another way to look at it. This is just a screenshot of part of a little two page, um, document, marketing document that the, the chamber has. I'm not expecting you to read this, but th know that this document's available through the chamber or through me. But I, like, I just like the headlines across the top there. Uh, five things every employer wants in a 401k. They want one that's easy to administer, minimizes fiduciary liability, 
that stays compliant, that's cost competitive, and that teams with well-known providers. And uh, that's exactly what this plan does. Now let's talk about it in terms of, well, do you have a plan already or do you not have a plan? So let's say I'm talking to all the people out there, this thing's being recorded, maybe you're watching this in the future. Um, and maybe you already have a plan. So you're thinking, well, what, what should I be thinking about if I already have a plan considering the Carlsbad plan? Well, how is this plan different from what we would call standalone plan? The average 401k plan is standalone, meaning it's not part of a, a, a multiple employer plan like this. Well, it looks, feels, and acts the same. It, you can't tell the difference. I mentioned that in a moment ago. What's happening is you're essentially sharing a few experts and resources with other people. And that's how you're, you're getting this uh, reduction in cost. You keep your unique eligibility matching vesting rules, what we call the personality of your 401k plan. You keep the personality of your 401k plan. You don't have to give up those current uh, uh, elements of your plan. So what would the steps be in considering this? Well, you wanna continue a fiduciary approach. So what does a fiduciary do? Well, they should benchmark their plan to the marketplace on a regular basis. Every um, one to two years is what I believe to be the right, uh, especially now because things are changing so fast. So you wanna benchmark your plan to the marketplace, not to averages, but actually benchmark it to the marketplace. So you wanna include other standalone providers, but you also want to include the Chambers plan. And uh, if you have a broker um, on your plan, you need to insist that they do this. Uh, don't let them get away from doing this. They have to benchmark it uh, and don't let them benchmark to averages. And if you want any help with talking to your broker, you know, let me know, be happy to do that. Uh, you're, if you have a true independent plan advisor or broker like us, then they should oversee this benchmark process for you. And we'll do the benchmark process for you just like we do as the Chambers 401k advisor. And, and just a reminder that you have a loyalty to your fiduciary duty that is a greater loyalty or should be greater loyalty than to any provider loyalty you have. Uh, sometimes what happens with 401k plans is that the person, the people managing them for the company, they become good friends with their broker, they become good friends with their record keeper, and, and they want to continue the relationship because they like them and they're nice people. And, and that's great. And I appreciate that. But uh, your loyalty uh, to, be, to your fiduciary duty is far more important uh, than that. Okay, so what about people, uh, companies that don't currently have a 401k plan? Well, have you heard of CalSAVERS? Because if you're in the state of California, you're gonna to have to comply with CalSAVERS. It, it's a state of California mandate. Uh, if you have five or more employees, uh, you either have to have a plan um, or send your employees to the state designed, state run CalSAVERS plan. And um, it's a phased law by number of employees. So the deadline for 100 or more employees passed just a few days ago on September 30th. It was actually extended because of COVID. Uh, so if you are in that category uh, and, you're ha and you haven't done anything or you're just hearing this, call me right away and I'll help you get going. You got to go online and register and they make you go through like about a 10 step process to register and prove that you have a plan if you have one or, or you have to react to get a plan in place. Uh, I'm not sure if they're going to be granting any uh, <laughs> uh, relief on that if you if you drop the ball here, um, but I certainly would go advocate for you if you wanted me to. And then if you have 50 to 99 employees, um, then your deadline is coming up in about nine months, eight less than eight, less than nine months on June 30th of next year. And from five to 49 uh, will be June 30th of 2022, which will be here in no time. You've got to register with the state. Uh, even if you have a plan, you can't just say, oh, I've got a plan that doesn't apply to me. You actually have to go online and register with the state and prove you have to, they, you, they ask for a bunch of detailed information to prove that you actually have a plan in place. CalSAVERS 
if you want to you know use them as your plan it's very limited it's, it's essentially the same as having your own individual roth ira account so with the regular roth ira it's an after-tax contribution so you don't get any tax breaks and you can only contribute six thousand a year uh, or if you're over 50, 7,000 a year, it's, it's just like that. Um, it, the only thing is that it's being sent through your paycheck. Um, and so, you know, as an employer, you still have to go through, you know, uh, the process of making sure that the money gets sent to the state and all that kind of stuff, just like you would with the 401k plan. Um, but um, it, the equivalence, it's like an individual contribution to Roth IRA. There's no 401k features. Uh, you can't do profit sharing. You can't do matching. Um, and, um, and so one of the reasons why Brett was a, a, a very excited about this is seeing that Cal Savers was doing this mandate and seeing how limited their offering is, he wanted to have a really nice alternative for chamber members. So that, that was one of the big motivations for doing this. So what about why is the chambering offering? Let's talk a little bit more about that. Well, aggregation plans, that's where the industry is going. The advantages are so great. We've covered them as we've been talking here. And um, you want to be able to take this off your plate as far as the effort that goes into having a 401k plan. And the chamber cares, and they're a nationwide leader in offering this plan. Uh, and that essentially makes us kind of all leaders as being members of the chamber. And as I mentioned a moment ago, it's a Cal Savers alternative. Um, and this is excellence in employee benefits and compliance. Now, the chamber benefits. There's a, a tiny uh, five basis points, which is 0.05%. Um, but when you consider how massive the savings is with going to this plan, um, you know, it's the 0.05% the is nothing. And, and while we're on that you know, slide, I'll say too, well, what, what's O'Reilly Wealth Advisors place in all this? Well, we're the advisor on the uh, Carlsbad Chamber 401k plan. Um, anybody can be an advisor on one of these plans. Um, they have to be willing to, um, but other than that, anyone can do that. And in theory, you don't even have to have a broker or an advisor on your plan. You could do this on your own. I wouldn't advise it because there's still risk with this plan, but you can. Plus you have a responsibility to give your employees education and, you, and then you also want to be helping the company with making sure they're covering their bases, doing their fiduciary duty and documenting it. So let's talk about resources and next steps. Uh, you know, you can call myself, O'Reilly Wealth Advisors uh, at that number shown. Um, you know, we'll answer all your questions, no strings attached. Uh, we always put our clients' interests first. We're a fiduciary, and so we always put your interests first and, and no strings attached to have a conversation with us. Go to our website. We have a special blog post on the Chamber's uh, a plan. And, and we have, uh, by the way, uh, we just launched a brand new website. Uh, we completely scrapped our old one and, and built a new one. It's, we think it's pretty nice. And uh, you can go there to see our blog post. Uh, you, at that blog post, I also have that five pillars document, which I showed the partial screenshot of a little bit ago. You can download that five pillars document there. And ask the chamber. Of course, they'll probably just tell you to call us, which is great. Um, the chamber at some point in the future may have a landing page for this. It's not in place yet. Uh, but they definitely have this document. They could send it to you. Um, and that's what I have for myself. But I also have on the line. Wait a second now. Hold on. I do have another slide. Okay. So who's involved? So um, the, um, the main fiduciary on this plan who essentially takes over the oversight of the plan. Uh, now, a, a, co a company can never fully delegate um, their responsibility but this comes about as close as you can. So TAG Resources, and, and Greg Merriman is on the line here, uh, they serve as what's called the ERISA 316 Administrative Fiduciary. And um, that means they take care of the day-to-day -day minutia. They even take care of um, 
making sure the form 5500 gets done every year and they sign the form 5500 uh, for you. Transamerica, on the other hand, and I know that when Brett put this out there, he, 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 he put Transamerica on there. And uh, Transamerica is the record keeper and that's a very important position. Uh, and Transamerica is uh, specifically um, the most experienced with these types of plans because these plans are a little bit different in the sense that it's a whole bunch of plans in one big plan. So there's like an extra step in there, you might say, for the record, ke uh, record keeping and Transamerica is a, a top-notch record keeper and they're the best and most experienced with uh, these kind of aggregation programs. So they have the most record keeping experience. And uh, then there's also an investment fiduciary uh, in the, in the built into the plan as well. And they take on the responsibility for the investment lineup and the liability for the investment lineup. Um, with that, I'd like to uh, ask uh, Greg, and I'm not sure if we have our other, if we have someone from Transamerica on or not, but Greg, do you wanna say a couple words about this? Maybe fill in if you think I, uh, I missed anything or you think there's some things that be, should be uh, more emphasized, please do. No, really, and, and thank you, John and, and Brett and the Chamber for allowing us to, to be able to present uh, the Chamber solution to, to the members today, greatly appreciated and all the support that you're giving the, uh, the solution. Really, uh, John, you covered about everything that you could say. Uh, one of the things that, that I will say, to give you a little bit of a background on, on TAG as a true signatory name fiduciary, it's something that we have been doing and, and pioneered the industry with that 20 years ago. TAG is the largest 402A signatory name fiduciary in the industry with over 2.5 billion in assets under management in this program. So as John was talking about cost competitiveness and, and being a plan for you as members to take advantage of, you're truly getting the benefit of pricing that's scalable down to a startup plan or a $100 million plan based on the total aggregated assets in the plan. That's how the pricing really is a benefit to you as a chamber member. So looking at it from that aspect, you're getting the benefits from pricing and scalability, the administration and all that, as would a FedEx or a General Electric or something such as that. That's the type of administration and association partnership that you're getting with Carlsbad Chamber. Uh, looking at it in, in truly what brings the value to this solution are the three things to me that I think business owners look at uh, as being things that they keep them up at three o'clock in the morning or wake them up at three o'clock in regard to their business in general. And that's cost containment, administration and exposure and liability, which are the things that uh, John was talking about. You look at cost containment, the pricing today that you're getting based on the, the aggregated assets is pricing that today we've taken our 17th price reduction in the last 10 years. Uh, TAG has never taken a price increase. Uh, we've always taken price decreases. So you can be assured that you're containing costs today and in the future for your 401k plan, something that a single employer plan just cannot say in this environment. And as far as administration is concerned, let's face it, even before COVID and post COVID, more and more companies are gonna be doing far more with far fewer less employees. So with TAG doing and facilitating 99% of the day-to-day -day administration of the plan and doing so as a fiduciary relieves that liability and hassle of you as a, as a, a plan sponsor as well. And more importantly, the last piece that truly makes it advantageous as a Carlsbad Chamber uh, solution is TAG acting in that fiduciary capacity and the 338 investment manager acting as a fiduciary eliminates to the absolute maximum of allowed by law of the personal exposure that you have in running and operating and sponsoring a 401k plan for your employees. So it truly is a bundled end-to-end -end turnkey solution that the chamber has put together and vetted on behalf of the members. So we're really proud to be partnered with uh, John and with Brett and the chamber and Kathy and everyone uh, and look forward to really working closer with all the members on this solution. Thank, Thank you, you very Greg. much, Greg. Thank you, Greg. Thank you, John. I'm going to jump in there. Um, and so you guys who are w watching this can see from a chamber perspective, why we're excited about this. I mean, for our members, we're talking about offering something that saves them time, saves them money, reduces their liability, and gives them features that you can't really get anywhere else. So 
we're very excited about this. Um, and John, I don't know if you were prepared at this point now to open it up to questions, but I, I just wanted to share that. I want to give a visual here. So remember at the beginning, I showed you that the typical small company uh, with the standalone plan has something like this, where the, the plan sponsor is in the middle of the, the red ring of uh, risk and liability there. And when, when you get into the chambers plan now, you have, uh, you still have, you can't get rid of the red ring of liability, but now you have two different fiduciaries that are in there with you, uh, shouldering a large portion of that liability on your behalf. And, and, uh, and you also have a special high quality record keeper that has specific aggregation expertise. So this is uh, definitely, you know, the way to go. So I'm ready for questions. That's awesome. Thank you. Um, yeah, so if anybody has a question, feel free to unmute yourself and- uh, I have a question. John Sanders. Thanks, what John, can, go ahead. So what can you invest in? So what does the individual, what uh, flexibility does the individual have and what can they invest in as their omnibus uh, plans? Yeah, so um, we, uh, th there's actually multiple, what they call ERISA 338 advisors that you can choose from on the Chambers plan is a, a, an advisor called Two West Advisors. But each one of these 338 advisors um, follow uh, the current uh, state of the, um, of the rules uh, that you have to live up to uh, with, when you uh, offer fund choices in a 401k plan. So one thing you have to do is you have to make sure that there are funds available that will, are low cost and give a diversified exposure across the market. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to give um, uh, what they call a, a QDIA, a Qualified Default Investment Alternative, which typically is something like a, um, a target date fund or similar, so that um, uh, if uh, someone who's 20 years old gets in the plan, uh, what you don't want to have, do, have them do is put all their money into a conservative bond fund, okay, because it's not going to grow very much. Uh, you want a 20 year old to be automatically invested in a wide array of stocks around the world so that their funds can grow appropriately over time so that they have money in retirement. So there's a whole kind of uh, a structure of rules and, and best practices when it comes to the fund lineup. And so um, these plans fulfill that. Now in terms of the cost savings in the funds, because they're um, one, of the, one of the things people don't know is that if you are trying to look at what funds will have the, the best future performance, uh, Morningstar does a study every year where they go back in time and they look at what's the relationship between fund expenses and future performance. And what they find is that there's a nearly perfect correlation to the lower the fund expense, the better the future performance of that fund. And so fund expenses is a real critical uh, element and when you look at a typical standalone plan that has a broker, the average fund expense might be 150 basis points. When you work with a fiduciary like us on a standalone plan, that's gonna to drop to maybe around 19 basis points. And then I'll allow Greg to introduce what, you know, with two West advisors, what are we at now? About four basis points maybe is the average expense ratio? The, the QDI is, is actually uh, at four basis points and the overall menu itself based on a true weighted average is seven basis points. Yeah, so, so that, I don't think that answers your question, John. Um, well, what, uh, my question, one, one step further. Mm -hmm. do, do you invest in a, uh, uh, is your plan required to be all, all on one mutual fund company? Can you spread it out and pick your funds? And can the individual it, choose which ones he wants? That's yeah. a great question. There are no proprietary funds. It is a full diversified menu. Okay. So it's like having your own account. Yes, you, you have the ability to allocate in, to all of the funds that are available on the investment menu that's selected by the three. Allocate it as you so choose in any fund as well. I'm not sure if that's must be on Greg's end. I don't know. It is, uh, I caught the gist of it. Yeah, so it's not a self-directed brokerage account. No, um, I understand that. It, you're, okay. You're, you're with mutual funds only. And, yes. and, and you're limited to the list that's provided in the fund. That's sufficient as long as the list yeah. is more than 10. 
I presume you have a hundred funds on the list. Oh no, no, that because then you'd have a bunch of overlapping funds, and so you want diversification. Yeah. So, um, you know, you don't want to have, for example, five different large cap funds. Okay. Um, so uh, there's going to be only one U.S. large cap fund. There's going to be only, you know, so um, typically the number that you need is somewhere in the range, depending on how you uh, f uh, fine tune and dice up the different areas of the market. Uh, you can have anywhere from, say, 10 to 25 at the most. It's, but, it's more than anybody can absorb. Yeah. And, and it, typically the problem in the past has been they offer way too many funds. And then yeah. people say, and what happened during the uh, lost decade uh, in the 2000s uh, was that everyone said, oh, well, I know large cap funds. I'll put all, money, all my money in large cap. And then the S&P 500 had a 10-year period where it was down for an entire 10-year period. And yep. people didn't do too well in their 401k plans because they weren't diversified. Any other questions? So this fully, so if a small company, because I've invested in several of them around here, so mm -hmm. we're all looking to meet our 22 uh, deadline um, yeah. just to come to you or to Brett or someone there and say, we want to organize it. And yeah. Come to me. And if they don't have a plan currently, what I'll do is I'll put together um, uh, some quotes of, of both the best standalone plans as well as the chamber plan. Yep. And they kind of see what the different cost uh, items are on there and they can kind of, you know, pick and choose what they want to do. I can tell you right now though, the, the chamber, option is going to be the least costly for sure. I want to say thank you very much, John, and thank you to the, the people, Greg and all who are here with you. Um, great plan. And uh, we really look forward to partnering with you for the, the next few years. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely.